Five years ago, the entire world watched as one boy after another emerged from a flooded cave in northern Thailand, miraculously alive. One of the rescuers was Australian Dr. Richard Harry Harris. He's a recreational cave diver and an anaesthetist. After he volunteered to help, another diver had an idea. He asked if Harry could sedate the boys. Harry's answer was a hard no. It'd be a death sentence. But we all know now that it was the opposite. Harry and the rest of the rescue team went through a harrowing journey, but saved 13 lives. He returned home to Australia a hero with a surprising new message. We should all be taking more risks. Well, Dr. Richard Harris joins us now. And Harry, you're initially a bit hesitant to sedate these boys. How did you go from, that's a crazy idea, to, OK, sure, let's put these boys under so we can get them all out? Even though I didn't believe that the plan would work, and that probably we were actually euthanizing the boys, you know, in some ways that still seemed better than letting them starve to death or die of infection in the cave, you know, a process that might take a couple of weeks, let alone the psychological impact on them and me, to be honest, having one, once you've met them, to turn your back on them and, and walk away and knowing that that was going to happen. So it was far easier to just give this thing a crack than to, than to walk away from them. Wow. So even as you give them the anaesthetic and send them off with your colleagues, you're not sure whether they'll make it out the other side? Oh, I would say I was sure they were all going to die, to be honest. Um, wow. I was, in, I, I was close to 100% certain that this could not work. And there's 100 reasons I had in my mind why, you know, rendering someone unconscious and pushing their head underwater for a three-hour journey out of the cave through very tightly restrictive, um, you know, un underground landscape and, and zero, literally zero visibility for most of that journey. You know, it's just incomprehensible that they could come out alive. When did you find out that the first of the boys had made it? Yeah, only at the end of the first day when I finally came out. At the end of the day, I said goodbye to the rest of the kids and the coach and said we'll be back tomorrow, which was a, a foolish promise, knowing that, you know, it's, it's raining and that, you know, at any moment the cave could flood again and we'd be unable to get back in there. Uh, three hour swim back out of the cave and then when I surfaced in chamber three which was the end of the diving section of the cave one of the American pararescue guys um, tapped me on the shoulder and said uh, four out of four doc and I assumed that he meant that all four had had died and I I went well yeah I guess I expected that and he saw the look on my face and he went no mate they're all they're all alive Incredible. Look, you've talked about how inspiring they were as a group, but do you have any insight into why that group survived when another might not have? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I've, I've spent the past five years thinking about that very thing, to be honest, which has led to my interest in, you know, outdoor adventuring and risk-taking and why that might be really important for all of us to make us more resilient and courageous. But talking actually to some of the locals over there and asking them what, what they thought, and they said, oh, you know, they're just tough country kids. These, these boys, some of them were from Myanmar. They're essentially refugees living in that border community. They've had a difficult life. You know, they're surrounded by mountains and jungle and this fabulous cave that they'd been to a number of, a number of times. And that combination of living that outdoorsy life full of adventure and also having a bit of hardship in their life has... has culminated in these very robust individuals. So amazingly, despite how close this all came to tragedy, you're now actually a proponent of taking more risk in our lives. And not everyone's going to start diving in caves or bungee jumping off bridges, but what do you recommend as a way to introduce healthy risk into our routines? I mean, for me, it is outdoor adventuring, but it doesn't have to be that at all. It can be just doing things that that frighten you and, um, you know, push yourself outside your comfort zone whenever you can because it always pays dividends in the end. Harry, thanks so much for your time tonight. That's OK, and keep up the good work over there. In, uh, mm. What a terrific guy. This story, I mean, even just listening to... Imagine what was going through his head when he thought about those stats of whether he could actually bring those boys also, out. Also, imagine 
being there and someone says, hey, we're looking for an anaesthetist with underwater caving yes. experience. <laughs> go, That's me. Chances. I was born to do this. Hey, um, I don't know if you've watched it. There is a phenomenal documentary you can watch called The Rescue. Uh, the footage that they have, um, was some of it was actually taken by some of the divers that found the boys. Mm. So, um, And it's crafted amazingly. And it's got Harry and the other two divers, the, um, the two British divers that went in. So um, it's called The Rescue and you should definitely um, watch it. What do you think about the whole notion? Because as a parent now, when it comes to risks, I am shocking. I mean, I don't think any of my kids have broken a single bone because I am, I'm there to, yeah. just, to, to take them out of harm's way. We try... To break your children. We try, <laughs> we try to let them make their own mistakes, yeah. but if you can see they're about to do something stupid and hurt themselves, it's very hard not to jump no. in. I was interested to hear him say that one of the reasons they survived is because they had had kind of tough lives. And I was thinking... Hmm, what would have happened if it was a group of Greylin mm. kids in that cave? They I would have <laughs> them yeah. Where about... is my soy milk latte? Oh, about... yeah. <laughs> Does this cave have Wi-Fi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the doc would have been right, wouldn't he? Um, but I love him. I, love... I don't want him as my doctor because his initial diagnosis seems a little dark. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Might want to get a second opinion. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you can't l live your life with it governed by what could go wrong. Agreed. You've got to live your life governed by what could go right, right, or you just won't achieve stuff. Yeah. It's very sage. It is. Yeah. Advice from you, I love it. Hey, there's also some great advice in this book, which we were talking to Harry about, and it's called The Art of Risk. Um, it's on shelves now, um, and it's bright yellow, you can't miss it, highlighter yellow, um, and it looks excellent. I'm going to be reading it. Guy Williams has taken a bit of a risk by uh, putting a new hairdo on national TV tonight. <laughs> Why do we think? I think it looks good. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah, it's cool.